Manuel and I were talking um, an, an hour ago at dinner about something I wanted to ask you about, which completely escapes my mind right now. <laughs> the what? The columns. No, we talk. Yeah, we did. We've, have we, we've talked about the columns, haven't we? Or have we? No. No. Well, tell about the columns. A <laughs> so if we hit, if, if I thought we talked about them, then we probably didn't. Well, before we actually focus on the white matter of the brain, and we left out the gray. But all of the connectivity of the white matter actually comes from cell bodies located within the uh, gray matter. And uh, what happens is that cells are ar arranged together within modules uh, within the gray matter. And uh, you can think of these arrangements as a microprocessor. You know that within a computer you have one or two microprocessors and that's where all of the information is actually processed within uh, your desktop computer. Uh, the brain has like 100 million of those. It has like six, 700 million of those microprocessors, which are called mini columns. Mini and, columns. And, and they're called- Are they mini, literally columns? Uh, they are cells and their projections that have a vertical orientation. And because of that, uh, we call them columnar. And because of their dimensions in terms of microscopy, uh, because they are so small, we call them mini oh, I columns. But, but the main thing is, is that uh, they are the microprocessors of the brain. That's where the information that comes to the brain is um, actually processed. Okay? And uh, what we have found is that in patients with dyslexia, the mini columns are bigger than um, in comparison to normal individuals. Bigger, not necessarily longer, but wider. Is that what you mean? Wider. By wider. Uh, meaning that their circuitry has actually changed in one way or another. But also, these microprocessors, these mini columns, in normal individuals, they have a certain variability in terms of size. So you have some bigger mini columns followed by some smaller mini columns. In the brain of the patient with dyslexia, this variability goes to an extreme. Okay, you have an enormous variability. And uh, the way that we actually interpret the finding is that everything from the environment goes through prelay stations within the brain towards the cortex but they do not end in a pinpoint area. They actually go to large areas of the brain. If all of the mini columns were the same, they all have the same circuitry, okay? And stimuli going into these large regions would go and be processed through the same circuitry and provide the same output. So there's very little in terms of output. The brains would be hardwired if all of the outputs were the same. And, and that's what actually happens in the uh, case of uh, the brains of autistic individuals. In the dyslexic brain, okay, that variability actually confers an advantage because the same stimuli coming in provides for multiple opportunities to answer to a particular uh, environmental exigency. Now, is that because the column goes down through various layers of the brain and, and comes in contact with different, different cells that can be stimulated. Yes. That, uh, performing different functions because of it. So that the, the, the bigger the column is, the more variety it can experience in stimulating or being stimulated by other parts of the brain. Whereas if, when it's small, it's, 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 got, it's in contact with a, um, less less, um, fewer parts of the brain that give it fewer sense, a, a smaller sense of variety, huh? Right, and, and, and I would say that that was part of the discussion that we initiated some, some time ago in regards to short and long connections, because at one end of the spectrum, okay, in terms of connectivity, we have brains that have supernumerary short connections at the expense of long connections. <coughs> Those brains also have small mini columns and they lack in terms of variability, right. in terms of size of mini columns. Uh, again, those would be the prototype of the brains of autistic individuals. Uh, at the other side of the spectrum, you have brains where uh, connectivity excels in terms of longer connections 
at the expense of shorter ones, mm -hmm. but then the mini columns, the microprocessors, are fairly larger and they exhibit a lot of variability uh, in comparison to one another. 